right? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thing here at 12, right? Yes. Section yes. 11. Uh, pretty big one. Um, especially uh, in addiction. We'll get that later on. And then also high standards for yourself and then always putting yourself down and not reaching to potentials that you think you should reach as quick as you think you should reach them. Uh, but this one says he has extreme standards of perfectionism. Does it apply them consistently? He may apply his high standards to others, then criticize them when they all fall short in any way that deems important. His perfectionism depends on what he values. Usually something he wants to do at the moment, he uses perfection to avoid a difficult task because he might not succeed perfectly. In recovery, there is a messy business. I'm going to stick to recovery things or get to like normal things later on. Um, recovery is messy. You have to dig and throw out things you don't like. Uh, learn new things because you don't know them at all and you punish yourself because you don't know them and then you're not growing quick enough and uh, your time's running out and all those kind of things you think about and that's all just stopping you from growing. All the thinking that I can look around here and see a lot of things in here is imperfect and a lot of things are not perfect at all. And uh, a lot of people use that to not recover. Because mm -hmm. my conditions must be perfect for me to recover. Mm -hmm. I mustn't do any dishes. <laughs> I must sleep until nine. Mm -hmm. I must be woken up with eggs and bacon. <laughs> then I'll recover. <laughs> then I'll just be, you know, that will be off my mind. And I'm <laughs> Let me tell you what, you'll find problems with the, the runniness of the eggs then. Yeah. Yes. Or they're too hard. <laughs> or the bacon's not crispy enough. Uh, now I can't recover again because this whole thing's just it's a waste of my time. <laughs> if you wait for perfect conditions, I think it's in this yeah. somewhere else. If you wait for perfect conditions, you know, um, yeah, you'll, 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 nothing in there. When's the best time to stop? Now. No. 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 Not when I come back from my weekend. <laughs> Not when I uh, get up. Done with my life story. Yeah. Not when I'm uh, oriented. But uh, a lot of that, you know, plays a big part in how you perceive things. And then, obviously, another thing that comes to mind is that. When you're busy in the recovering process, you want to be this perfect human being when you leave here. Mm. It's like, a, oh my word, I'm so centered, you know, nothing to bother me. I can just see things for what they are all the time. Nothing uh, can put me down. And uh, it's not true, because a lot of the times the first thing that, uh, that happens when you leave here is you get disappointed. Mm. Or someone rejects you. Mm. Mm. And then just everything that you've learned in that moment just crumbles. And then suddenly you start thinking, I'm not good enough, I didn't work hard enough, I should have told you all of that, da -da -da. And then you're back where you started. So here's some stuff, it's a pretty interesting stuff. I've got to dance from a biblical point of view, perfectionism and those kind of things. So because uh, for perfectionists, Life is an end, uh, endless report of accomplishments or looks. It's a fast and enduring track to unhappiness, and perfectionism is only often accompanied by depression and eating disorders. Uh, what makes perfectionism so toxic? Um, is what, while those uh, into its grip, its desire succeed. Uh, they are most focused on avoiding failure, so they are a negative orientation. So, um, I don't tackle any things, I don't start any things, because the, the things around me aren't perfect. I don't feel good enough. If God, you know, God told the, uh, I don't know if he, uh, he saw, but he, uh, or, I can't remember who it was, but he said, uh, um, go. He said it to a lot of them, he said to a lot of the prophets, go. Uh, the prophets didn't go, listen, Lord, um, I'm not feeling it right now. <laughs> Holy Spirit is not with me. I can feel in the back of my head there's something wrong. That's what he said. He said, go. God's timing is more important than anything else in your life. Well, sorry, not anything else, but <coughs> it's very important. 
that you wait on the Lord to move you, wait on God, and a lot of things. Okay, so this is one of these things. This question, what does the Bible say about perfectionism? The answer is, uh, to put it bluntly, perfectionism is a hoax. We cannot be perfect. Yet many, many, uh, many people continue to strive for the uh, unattainable goal. Uh, they want to exceed expectations at work, home, at church, etc., in sports, in hobbies, in physical appearances, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, they have somehow convinced themselves that to be acceptable requires to them to measure up to personal or social standards of perfection. Mm. Who puts in who puts standards of perfection? The world does. Mm. You must be uh, you must be this at a certain age. You must be that at a who. Where does it say in the Bible that you've been married in your twenties? Mm. Nowhere. Where does it say that you have to find a degree before you go find a job? Nowhere. Nowhere. The world standards of people, people use worldly standards to put themselves in boxes or categories of uh, if you're successful or not. People's standards are so high, but none of them actually live up to them. And it's a horrible place to be when you eat this perfectionism thing, because nothing's ever good enough. Nothing I do will ever be good enough to make me satisfy myself. You're your worst critic, by the way. You are the one putting yourself down, not the other ones around you. Like uh, maybe me, Lucas, Rolf, Kevin, Dickie, anyone who, who, who teaches you. We are here to bring you up. There's, your standards you set yourself is your own. We know that recovery takes a process. Some people might be here on uh, two months. But then in the third month, yeah, it takes time. It's not a race for you to recover. It doesn't mean the quicker you go through your CR book, that's how fast you are growing. Um, Nothing to do with it. Right. The CR book is very important because it makes you dig. It pulls out things of you that you haven't thought about. It's a very important part of this program. But that's not how you get measured in your head. Well, it's not after the very second I had a chat with Pastor Kevin. And uh, we discussed, uh, you know, the fruits. Um, everybody thinks that uh, uh, the fruits of the Spirit, joy, peace, gentleness, love, kindness, you know, all these kind of things, uh, is something that you, you obtain. Or not you, you obtain, but something that you... Um, you get. If you walk in obedience with the word of God or what God says to you about your calling or your purpose or whatever, if you walk in righteousness with that part and God is your focus, see yourself as a tree. You produce these fruits. You don't get them from happiness from things. I don't get it because now I've got a job. I don't get it because now uh, I'm in this part of my program, so I must carry these fruits around. Not the truth. If I walk in righteousness, my tree produces these fruits. You cannot obtain them by just doing things. Or making things will make you happy. <clears throat> That's not how that works. Uh, the point of the gospel is that we are unable to save ourselves. We all fall short for the glory of God. We all miss the mark. Sinners need a savior. That's why Jesus came. You need a savior because you are a sinner. But you are all in right standing with God. You are not sin conscious, but righteousness. Mm -hmm. uh, when we trust in Him, He forgives our shortcomings, imperfections, and iniquities. Uh, we can stop striving for the worldly perfection and the rest. In the perfection one, Matthew, the rest in the perfected one. So Jesus came, he lived a perfect life and died a perfect sacrifice. Lived a perfect life. <coughs> and uh, you know, we all strive to be like Jesus. We have all the abilities and things to become Jesus. We have the abilities. And, you know, we have the mind of Christ, but uh, we listen to worldly things. And it confuses us and darkens our mind and darkens our view, blocks our ears.
and so you become something. God gave you a, God gave you a face. You choose to be something else. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so here are some interesting things out. The problem with perfectionism. Um, when you learn how to relax in God's uh, liberating, liberating grace and break out of the prisons of perfectionism, you will find a new level of joy and freedom in your life. What are you yet to do? I'm serious. I'm, and this is a question I ask myself. And, well, I ask myself this question, but in a, in a different perspective. But you guys are in these chairs and things at the moment. What are you here for? Are you? That's the right answer, but are you? Do you do things daily to change your circumstances? Or do you wallow in your misery and your unhappiness and not want to be here? It's weak. You all want to be these tough men, but you do nothing to help your situation. Okay. Um, because perfectionism is destructive of your life, um, destructive to your life in several ways. And number one is that uh, defeats your initiative. So I want to start something, and then immediately I think, oh. No, I'm not going to finish it, so I'm not going to start at all. It won't be perfect. You know, because I haven't got the right bricks. You know, the, the, the sand's not the right colour. I'm not going to start building this house because I don't have the right tools. What must you do to build a house? Stop. Right. Stop. Your life is not going to change if you think that, oh, today I must change my life, today I must change my life, tomorrow I'm going to change my life, you know. After six weeks, my phone calls come and I tell these people, like, oh, man. <laughs> 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 I never had a guy like that. Took the phone. That's why it's really important that when you guys do phone calls, you guys, uh, the, the, the guy does the phone call in the morning, you can, you can hear it. He would go like us and then when I was looking at you, like, <laughs> they beating me. <laughs> I came around and wanted to grab the phone from him. He said, uh, "Man, I'm sorry, your son's out of line." And after that, I had to phone him again and explain to him why he said he's got to be. I just said, "Because he doesn't want to be here. He sees no reason to change his life yet. Though he uh, made you struggle at home and you couldn't handle him there, so you sent him here." So we are trying to handle him. Now you guys want to. Yeah. Okay, so it damages your relationships. No one, nobody like uh, being nagged or, or corrected all the time. Uh, it's frustrating and irritating. The Bible says love forgets mistakes. Nagging about the past, the best of friends. That's from Proverbs. Perfection, uh, perfectionism, the desire to always correct damage relationships because it's rooted in insecurity. Perfectionism, perfectionists are always harsh. And demanding on others are really harsh and demanding on themselves. Uh, I'm sometimes guilty of that. Uh, I want people to see their true potential and then strive and, and grow, bear fruit and all the kind of things. So I can be kind of hard on, on certain situations and then I forget. But, uh, you know, some of you are learning and uh, some of you have been in addition a long time and you know it's a process of getting it right. So. Sometimes I put higher standards for yours than I should. But I don't believe it's all bad. <laughs> <laughs> making you want to strive for better or having something in your life. Like I have a lot of people in my life that make me want to strive better than I am or better than I am or where I'm going. Correct me when I'm wrong. The reason why you don't like correction that much is because you uh, you think people have taken insecure about yourself and in perfectionism I think it's what's going to be perfectionism later on um, I said something came into the other day and it was uh, I said to someone I said uh, um, a harsh word stirs up anger right 
But there's another flip to that coin that says a, a fool despises correction. Name? Mm -hmm. yeah. A what? Fool. A fool. That's on me, that's the Bible, that's a problem. Name? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, let's carry on. Um, it destroys your happiness. Why does it destroy your happiness? Because perfection is unattainable. Yeah, but if you set your high standards, if you set yourself little goals and never reach them, will you be happy? No. And also set realistic goals. Now, duck here, I'm going to become a flipping pastor. I'm telling you. We need to get money here. You know that sometimes if you become a pastor, you have to serve at a ministry for three years. That's one of the, one of the qualifications that you must become a pastor. You must serve at a ministry for at least three years. One of the things. You can't wait to get out of here. Huh? <laughs> you can't wait yeah. to get out of here. Can't, can't wait. You just show your happiness. Yes, uh, Elon, please just keep it short. <laughs> um, another reason why it doesn't make you happy is because perfectionism, you look at yourself a lot, and that always leads you to depression. Instead of focusing on God, if you focus on yourself, you're always going to see that there's stuff that's missing and lacking. And uh, always end up in the same place. I know I did at least. Mm. You know that there's nothing. You can do to make God love you less. Mm. Nothing. Mm. Nothing you can do to make God love you less. Um, you might be a perfectionist and don't even know it. Interesting stuff. So there is. Um, maybe you can relate to some of these uh, habits. You think uh, in all or nothing terms. Nothing is uh, either right or wrong, good or bad. Perfect or disaster, that's how you think. Uh, you tend to think um, in one extreme to another rather than seeing the characteristics of people and situations existing along with the continuum. For example, you tend to think she is mean instead of she can sometimes be or you. You think and act in extremes. You have you ever acted on a sentiment like this more than once, I had one cookie and screwed up my diet, I might as well eat them all. <laughs> <laughs> I have that sometimes. All of them. I like I have a, I have a <laughs> stash of cookies next to my bed, but they finish the whole sleep. But uh, I have like one, and then I'll have another, and then I'll have another, and I just love cookies. <laughs> <laughs> someone offers you a cookie, never say no. <laughs> As, unless you don't trust him. Oh. <laughs> uh, you can't trust others uh, to do a task correctly. That's a, one of the main things. It's a delegation. Delegation is a huge thing. Um, when I was in my and things when I was going through things, I always wanted to do everything myself. Because I didn't trust anybody else to do it. <coughs> now that stops me stopping you from growing. You know what I mean? If I always want to do everything myself, you don't get yourself in situations where you can learn from. One of the things people that I don't agree is learning. Um, another one. Um, we have demanding standards for yourself and others. You believe in always giving your best and you accept others to do the same. What's wrong with that? <coughs> and you are scared to death of looking like a failure. That's what's wrong. You're scared of looking like a failure to other people. Because the thing is, you're so nervous when you leave it, you don't want to disappoint anybody ever again. Because when you leave it, you think you like this. Look, we, we strive for it. We, we give you information and tools and things to tackle the world. We really do, because we all standing in front of our living testimonies of, of what happens. So, you're so scared you've got these high standards and your family's all around. It's naive to think that you'll never disappoint your loved ones again. Mm. Can't live like that. It's insane. 
You are going to disappoint the people that you love again. Because we live in this world. But make sure it's not the things that you said you were never going to do again. It's not a free time to relapse. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to get that out there. <laughs> but you'll disappoint them in some other way. Because we are flawed. Um, you have trouble completing a project because you think there is always something more to do or make better. Uh, you obsess about sharing your book project, meal, invitation, business card, website, article, or speech with others. You want to make sure your work is the best it can be before revealing it. <coughs> so, the characteristic of being a perfection. You will, the Parika principle teaches that you will only, you'll only impress or satisfy or please. 20% uh, of the people, 80% of the time. Or 80% of the people, 20% of the time. <coughs> you are... Dirk, you did a uniqueness yesterday. And it's uh, such a cool uh, thing to hear from me. Because uh, a lot of times, you know, God uses everybody. He doesn't just use you specifically. Uh, and God used a lot of people in an instant. They didn't work on a period of their faith and their growth and then suddenly God used them. God used them and they were still nothing. I mean, he, he whacked Paul for walls. He used the donkey to talk. Yeah. And he was still persecuting and killing them by then. So it's not, a, it's not something you obtain over a period of time, faith, and then God uses you. He uses you immediately. <laughs> If he wants you to do something, he'll make it. It's your choice to do it or not. That's how that works. But a lot of people come here and they think they so connected with God. These are done now. These are done. God speaks to me. <laughs> Uses me. It's a whack thing. It's prideful. Very prideful, if you think like that. God uses the pride. He's graced. Yes. Does this like it? Good, good job. Um, you use the word should a lot. I should do this, I should do that. Uh, maybe common phrases, both uh, out loud and inside your head. You have certain rules you believe that you and others should follow. And when those rules aren't followed, you are not pleased. Control freak. You want to control your recovery. You can control your life. That's what you said, Joe. Mm -hmm. You had no idea how to do things. Your way of thinking got you here. Mm. And still you think, like, ah, oh, Charlotte, this isn't a part of me. I know this man. Mm. Connected. <laughs> <laughs> He's supposed to be a high <laughs> <laughs> It happens all the time. I think everyone in this room thinks like it. Yeah. At one stage. <laughs> Look at this chick, holy moly! <laughs> yeah. That's the truth. That's the truth. No, 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 no. It's just fun. I think we are like the same day. What are you? No, no, no. <laughs> it's true. Um, your self confidence depends on what you accomplish and how others uh, react to you. You strive for excellence and need validation from others to feel good about yourself. Ish. Tough place to be. Tough place to be. You are the most uh, difficult person to impress. If you mistake. You tend to fix it on something you messed up. You may have done something right, but you still focus instead of the mistakes that you made. You focus on all those mistakes that you've made. You've, um, <coughs> especially in us sometimes, um, we as counselors and, and we as a, you know, mentors and things, um, we expect mistakes. 
We expect you, there should be trouble with your recovery and these kind of things. But sometimes when something happens, people are so hard on themselves because they thought that they was the specific person. Because they've been here for three or four months, they, they must be this person by now. And they're not. Mm. And then, poof! All the growth just goes up. Backwards. You see those crashes in your Because you keep on... You're not kind to yourself. You're allowed to make mistakes. I told another guy the other day, especially in Christian circles, uh, you get them. Um, you are judged by your last mistake. Instead of looking at a long period of time where you've done so much good, suddenly you do one thing right and all this just doesn't mean anything. And that's not the truth. You're allowed to make mistakes. Mm. But some people will judge you on your last little thing. And that's not Christian life. Mm. We strive for perfection, it doesn't mean that we are. Okay. Perfectionism is a thief. Uh, perfectionism refuses to stand for anything short of perfection, it steals all the following from you. It steals your joy, it steals your self confidence, it steals your ability to get things done, it steals your passion. It steals your self-acceptance, it steals your ability to grow. Because why? Because if I fall short of something all the time, I'm going to be hard on myself all the time. Yeah, stop trying. Yeah. Stop trying to achieve anything because I'm not good enough to get it. Perfectionism and tendencies, uh, as many people do, apply these 10 tips below to overcome perfectionism. <laughs> Recognize perfectionism. See if you're in it or not. Are you using perfectionism? Raise your hands. Oh, that's not just lying. That must be certain. <laughs> Okay, another one, uh, learn how to take criticism. A fool that despises correction. It's not a personal attack, it's to help you grow. One of my counselors told me the other day, he likes it when people tell him he does something wrong. So it makes him better. It's a nice way of looking at it. But people look at correction as a personal attack. Oh! I knew it. Um, recognize the difference between healthy, <coughs> and healthy striving and perfection. So healthy striving is making, setting little goals, little mistakes in between, you know, reaching them, making another little goal, making little mistakes, learn from them, books, make another one, another little goal. So you grow. <coughs> and also, Stephen Fuchik is one of the pastors that I watched lately. He's really, really good when it comes to like practical things. He says growth, uh, you don't always, when you're growing the most, it, it feels like you are, you know, distant from God. Mm -hmm. That's the situation that you grow the most, he says. Um, it's like when you gym, while you're gymming, you don't feel yourself getting stronger. But you are. So when you're in situations where you feel distant or very hard for you to handle, those are the situations where you need to push through. If you give up there, you don't grow anything. I can only grow by accomplishing things. You know what I mean? Getting through situations. If I take with the same situation over and over again, I look at a different angle, but I don't get over it. I won't grow where I need to go. That's a blocking my road. Uh, set realistic goals. Identify the must-haves and the nice-to-haves. This is a good uh, illustration there. Suppose you're buying a uh, house hunting. The first thing that you need to do is identify the must-haves, the features of the house, and they should include, include like uh, three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, because you have three kids maybe, and 
two and a half bathrooms, which is nice. A large kitchen because you have a big family. Uh, quiet neighborhood because uh, you're old and you don't want to. You don't party in or whatever. Uh, good school district because your kids are going to go to school now. Um, so, and then uh, lots of light, you know, because you're a child of light now, you're a child of God, so all the light must come in, you must be no dark places. Mm. And, and then the nice to have would be something like a fireplace, mm. swimming pool, patio, a den. But my must have is uh, I'm, it's easy. if it comes, it's just a bonus. And then, lower your standards. new things and then also move away from anything that uh, reinforces your perfection tendencies um, maybe you're in some kind of job that you your boss strives you for perfection all the time and you're the this person and, 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 and you fell short all the time and you don't feel worthy and you feel unfair Tomorrow. Today. Yes. Okay. I hate to like. 